When it comes to creating a demon, Muzan believed for one to be successful in the Upper Moon Six, the person would need a strong passion to drive them in their new life. Be it like Akaza, who was driven by his desire to become the strongest, or like with Enmu, who Muzan saw a lot of potential in thanks to his devotion to pain and suffering. Though interestingly enough, one of the highest ranking demons in the Upper Moon Six is someone completely without desire, who fakes his whole personality, this being the biohazardous blood-bloated black-hearted Buddha Benefactor, Doma, the second ranked Upper Moon Demon. Spoilers for Kimetsu no Yaiba up to the final arc in the manga, thus if you haven't read that and you want to avoid spoilers, you have been warned. Doma is the deceptively cheerful cult leader demon of the Upper Moon Six who acts as one of the final bosses in the story of Kimetsu no Yaiba, while also being built up throughout the story with direct connections to a number of the main cast, and the way he's designed reflects the worst elements of those characters, while also retaining his own personal identity, which is rather ironic given his nature as a psychopath, though before we get too deep into that, let's first discuss the meaning behind his name and design. Doma's name, like most other names in Kimetsu no Yaiba, hold with it a meaning that ties into his own character's history. With Doma, the characters that make up his name are child and polished or improved, which can be understood together as the polished child or the improved child, which plays with his own personal history, as Doma was born with rare physical traits, such as special multicolored irises and oak white hair, which was just extremely blonde and is later depicted as sort of golden blonde mixed in. His parents viewed this as a sign that the gods have chosen their son to speak through, and use his appearance to begin their own cult, this being the Paradise Faith Cult. Though his parents never cared enough to realize that making their son the figurehead of a cult would hugely impact Doma's own personal development, as from a young age, he did what he was told mostly because he was completely apathetic and had no desires of his own. His kindness came only from the fact that he found satisfaction in helping others feel something, but even he admitted the whole process including his parents, were terrifyingly stupid and confusing. And this is because Doma was clinically apathetic, likely having something like alexithymia, as he could not feel or understand his own emotions, but his body could create emotional responses. So much so that when his father was violently stabbed to death by his mother for cheating and flirting behind her back with their worshippers, which in turn led to her own suicide, the only thing Doma was concerned with was that they were bloodying up his worshipping area. Then with his father, Followers, all he saw were desperate people who stupidly believed that he was some sort of supernatural figure all because of his physical appearance, and putting their faith into an afterlife or paradise that he knew wasn't real since his parents were the ones who created it. Though their begging and worshipping actually caused him to express what he thought was an emotion, this being sadness, as he wanted to help those people because he pitied them, viewing himself as better than them due to his knowledge. And so Doma created a persona of a kind and caring deity faking every aspect of his personality and continuing his role as the figurehead of the cult, welcoming in new members and benefiting from their suffering till he turned 20 and was approached by the closest thing to a god that he had ever met. This being Muzan, who viewed the Paradise Cult as a free source of food and gifted Doma with the power of a demon. Which in turn, with his new powerful and immortal body, it cemented Doma's placement as the cult's supernatural voice of the gods. Spending over 200 years to establish himself, Doma now appears as a genuinely kind person, and he would consume those into himself who wished to join Paradise, as his own twisted way of saving them. Their pain would end and they would become something greater. He also made one change to the Paradise Faith Cult's foundation, this being that the god who he spoke to was Muzan, both in a way of paying tribute to the man that gave him his immortal body, but also because Muzan could literally talk to him in the same way his followers believed God would talk to him, even being able to gift this ability onto those who he turned into a demon as well. Though Muzan was very apathetic to this role as Doma's god, never really liking the man due to his desireless life. Though to Muzan's own surprise, Doma would quickly rise up the ranks of the Upper Moon Demons, achieving the status of the second rank Upper Moon in a relatively short period of time compared to the others. This was due in part to his diet and his own terrifying abilities along with his deceptively tactical mind, and of course his extremely durable body. Doma is honestly one of those people who seems like they were always born 
to be a demon, as he thrives in the role, being able to use a foolish facade to mask his own intellect so that he can completely analyze his opponent's fighting style and weaknesses and adapt to it extremely quickly. Beyond this, Doma's body is extremely resilient, being able to regenerate moments after being cut, and even being able to counter and destroy various amounts of poisons in a matter of seconds. He was so durable that it took 700 times the lethal dosage of poison to finally weaken him to the point that he could not regenerate normally. And even then, it took a good bit for that poison to take effect, as Doma was truly gifted as a demon, and it can be seen best with his fighting style and blood demon art. Doma's fighting style is rather unique, as he's mastered the elegant art of Tensenjutsu, or Iron Fan Technique, as he fights with a dual pair of razor-sharp Iron Japanese war fans. The premise of this style is rooted in Japanese mythos, and more specifically the legend of Mimamoto no Yoshitsune, who learned this fighting style from powerful yokais of the raging wind, Tengus. Yoshitsune used this fan to utterly embarrass the powerful samurai Benkei by parrying away his blocks and his salts with ease. Though this fighting style isn't all myth, in the 16th century it's found its place in the real battlefields of the Sengoku Jedi, with famous samurai figures carrying them around at their side for close quarters protection, with famous use cases being when Takeda Shingen was able to fend off a surprise assault from Usagi Kenshin when they bursted into the commander's tent during the fourth battle of Kawanakajima. Though Doma's practitioner of the fans reach beyond their practical use in war and bring them on par with their legendary origins, as the fans used in tandem with his blood demon art create a series of powerful attacks, all with names that tie into Doma's own character along with Japanese mythos. So let's start first with his most used technique, the Frozen Lotus technique. Frozen Lotus is a blood demon art where Doma freezes the moisture in the air around him to create several large ice lotuses which have razor sharp petals. This is not only used to increase the range of his attacks, but also create dry cold air in the vicinity around the ice lotuses, which would damage the lungs of anyone who breathed it in, making it an effective offense and defense against demon slayers. This attack, like many of the others in Doma's arsenal, is actually in direct reference to his status as a Twisted Buddha, though I'll get more into detail on that later in the video. But beyond that, the lotus itself is just a common symbol in Buddhism, with the flower starting from the mud and rising above it all. They're also scattered all across Doma's own personal area inside Muzin's Infinity Fortress. You also have the meditation position which Doma sits in, which is called the Lotus Style, and the Buddha himself is said to leave lotuses wherever he steps. But most importantly, the lotus is also a location in the Buddhist Naraka, which is the closest thing to a hell in that religion, with one of the lower regions of the cold Naraka being called the Lotus, and then there's a lower portion called the Greater Lotus, which is cold areas where a person is frozen and cracked in intense agony for an astronomically long period of time. Though following this attack, Doma has another technique called the Barren Hanging Gardens, in which Doma delivers a long series of fan attacks in a row that create gusts of ice shards that slices enemies to pieces. The name of this attack comes comes from the second of the seven wonders of the world, that being the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, a massive garden of legendary status that some scholars argue about the existence of to this day. The name of this attack was likely chosen because Doma's status as the second moon demon matched up well with the Hanging Gardens' own status as the second of the seven wonders, though the name Barren Hanging Gardens, which can also be read as Snow Withered Gardens, can play in part to the winter season of Japan and the cold winds destroying crops with Doma being famously responsible for the death of the Flower Pillar, which in turn plays into his next attack, Freezing Cloud, in which Doma uses the moisture in the air to create miniature ice crystals and clouds them in a dry, frozen air, which he can then displace with his fans. This creates a larger version of his Frozen Lotus's effect and makes it so Demon Slayers can't get close to him without risking their own lungs. This ability's name is playing off the Orochi winds of the winter season, in which the harsh winds of winter will descend from a mountain onto a village and destroy its crops which again plays into Doma killing the previous flower pillar. Then you have Cold Winter Princesses, which is a technique where Doma creates two female ice statues which are able to breathe his freezing cloud outwards as an attack. This technique seems to be designed to keep enemies at a long range while he can then study their weaknesses and create countermeasures. Doma even states whatever his sculptures witness, they can relay directly back to him. The appearance of these figures seems to be in direct reference to the popular Yukiono Yokai, a snow woman which is connected 
connected to the winter seasons of Japan, but it's actually more likely in reference to the less popular Surara Ona, which is an icicle woman, as according to mythology she was created by a lonely man who wished one winter to have a wife as beautiful as the massive icicles that grew in his home. This wish was later granted by the gods and the icicle became that very person, though when the summer seasons came the woman vanished, leading the man to assume that she had left him. So he married again and when winter returned, so did the Surara Ona, who was now furious that the man had cheated on her and transformed back into her massive icicle form and impaled the man, killing him. This story not only partly mirrors Doma's own mother and father to a degree, but it also plays well with his following attack, the wintry icicles, in which Doma creates multiple ice spikes out of the moisture in the air to rain down and impale his targets from above. This attack directly ties back into the story of the Surara Ona that I mentioned before, which also helps that it's an attack which directly follows the creation of the Cold Winter Princesses. Following this, you then have Scattering Lotuses, which is an advanced form of the Frozen Lotus technique in which Doma creates a gust of ice shards that are shaped like lotus petals and are all razor sharp and cut like blades. The name of this attack obviously again connects to Doma's own Buddha parallels, but also seems to be partly inspired by Bleach's own Byakuya's Bankai, which has a very similar purpose and visual design. Bleach is also one of the major inspirations for Demon Slayer as a whole. Along with this, since we're talking about advanced lotus techniques, you also have lotus vines, in which Doma forms his ice into several lotuses that create long icy vines that can extend his reach so that he can either capture or cut his opponents, which again plays with his lotus and Buddhist symbolism. Though he hasn't only evolved his lotus technique, He's also modified the Winter Princesses to create something way more powerful, this being the Crystalline Divine Child, in which Doma creates a miniature ice replica of himself. These clones not only record all the data that they witness and transfer it to Doma, but also are able to fully replicate his techniques on a smaller scale. Essentially, Doma could level any playing field with this technique, turning two-on-ones into six-on-two battles without any real effort of his own. Though it seems that his focus is required to maintain their forms, they are also significantly less durable than the real thing. The name of this technique refers to Doma himself, as he has always been told that he is a divine person. Along with this, it plays into his status as a Buddha. Though this isn't Doma's final technique, Instead, that comes in the form of the Hoarfrost Water Lily Bodhisattva, in which Doma takes all of the moisture in the air and the water around him to forge a massive statue in the form of a Bodhisattva, or someone who is on the path to becoming a Buddha. He then rests atop the head of the giant and controls it while it devastates all below it. The statue assumedly can use all of Doma's techniques, as it's shown to be able to breathe gusts of freezing cloud. The name of the attack also partly references another stage in the Buddhist hell, the Utapala, or Blue Lotus, in which the inhabitants are frozen cold to the point that their skin turns blue like the Utapala Water Lily. This technique also cements Doma as a twisted form of the Buddha, specifically Gautama Buddha, as Doma and Gautama have very similar histories. Both were born into the world with a great destiny. Gautama was foretold to either be one day the emperor or found a grand religion, where Doma was considered to be a divine being from the get-go. Also how Doma was raised, led him down the path of becoming the head of a religion in a similar way to the Buddha. Though, where Gautama Buddha's revelation came from the realization that desire is the path to suffering, Doma was already without desire and could only understand that humans suffered because of what they wanted. Another clear difference between the two came from their status, as Gautama Buddha gave up his life of wealth and safety to found the middle path, where Doma never left his position of wealth, though he also never felt anything from having it to begin with, and when he saw people people wishing for what he had, suffering because they couldn't get it, he didn't understand their viewpoint, as money, status, and love didn't make him feel anything at all, so it must be a made-up desire similar to that of the paradise that his parents created. Though, even if it was out of pity, Doma still wanted to help these people, so in a similar but dark twisted way to the Buddha, Doma embraced these people into himself and helped them escape the cycle of suffering, the only way that he knew how. Though, unlike the Buddha, Doma Doma did imitate the wants of his worshippers. He engaged in all kinds of vices, be it spending money on lavish outfits to make himself look pretty, or engaging in relationships with either sex. Though he seems to prefer women to a degree, not because of their looks, but because of how beneficial they are to eat if they fail to make him feel anything, especially if they were pregnant, which is actually the explanation he uses to explain how he grew in strength so quickly. 
and is also a great through line into showing how much of a monster Doma really had become. Though there were some women that he actually grew attached to, one specifically being Kotoho Hashibira, the mother of the godly demon-purging beast king of the mountain, Inosuke. Doma essentially saw Kotoha as a nice distraction, taking her in and protecting her from her abusive stepfamily, even killing them when they came looking for her. The two likely had a relationship of sorts, but Doma clearly viewed her more as a pet than anything else. And then when she discovered that he was a demon, Kotoha fled from the cult's warehouse, and in a desperate attempt to save her own son from their demise, she dropped him off the cliffside before being struck dead by Doma and consumed. Which actually leads me into Doma and his own connection to a group of major characters in the story of Demon Slayer, and how he represents them in a twisted way. Starting first with Inosuke. As where Doma and him share a history, they also share a similar ego. With Inosuke, it's an external expression of his own superiority that can be partly swayed by proving oneself to Inosuke, where Doma, it is internalized superiority, where he looks down on others no matter what, and in fact, tries to save them in his own twisted way. Then you have Shinobu, who Doma not only killed the sister of, but the two of them also share an outward persona, creating a mask to hide their true selves. Where Shinobu, she buries her rage behind a cheerfully venomous exterior, Doma's personality is a carefully created lie founded on a void of an emotionless core. Though the person that Doma reflected the most wasn't Shinobu or Inosuke, but a girl whose abuse left her a hollow shell of a person that could not make decisions for herself. Kanao Sayuri. As both her and Doma were devoid of emotions, though unlike him, Kanao didn't hide her broken status, and she was able to see right through the deception that Doma had created over hundreds of years of practice the moment that he tried to express himself, even mocking him for being so worthless that he shouldn't exist, and using his own tactics against him, trying to anger him into attacking her. Along with this, where Doma was born with special looking eyes, Kanao was actually born with special eyes, being able to focus with such intensity that the flow of time would slow, and it's thanks to this ability, along with Shinobu's sacrifice and Inosuke's own unique assistance, that they were able to band together and actually slay this monstrous figure. And in Doma's death, he still felt nothing. He wasn't even sad, upset, or angry that he was dying. He was truly hollow beyond recovery, until his soul reached the shore of the Sanzu River, where he was reunited with Shinobu, whose expression of disdain for Doma resulted in him feeling a positive emotion for the first time. And with these feelings, he thought a fantasy for so long being proven to exist, it opens up to him the possibilities that the afterlife that he thought was fake existed as well. Though instead of being horrified at the punishment that he might receive due to his actions, he is almost excited, even calling Shinobu cute and asking her if she would descend into hell with him. And she agrees in a mocking tone as they descend into the hell that Doma got the names of his attacks from. Doma is one of the better villainous demons in the whole of Kimetsu no Yaiba, as his emotionless nature and fake positive persona always creates an unnerving aura about him, even being disliked by his own allies like Akaza and Muzen. Also, interestingly enough, Doma appears to be a reference to the famous vampire of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure fame, Dio Brando, as both are blonde-haired, supernatural blood-drinking beings who are weak to the sun and possess a cult of personality. And in the same interview where Gatoge admitted that Bleach was a major inspiration for Kimetsu no Yaiba, Jojo was also mentioned as well, with aspects of vampires in Jojo being adapted into the demons of Kimetsu no Yaiba. Though beyond this, there's a moment in which Doma digs around in his brain to help him remember Inosuke, which mirrors the moment of Dio's excitement when he gained better control over Jonathan's body at the end of Stardust Crusaders. Along with this, Doma's blood art works in a very similar way to the vaporized freezing technique Dio created in Phantom Blood that can counter Hormone in a similar way that it counters Demon Slayers. Though, of course, these could all be coincidental. At the end of the day, Doma was a very well-built up and very well-executed concept of a creepy demon that discussed not only the Slayers that it fought, but the demons that allied with it. It also helped that his backstory didn't so much try to redeem him for his actions, but more so explained how he became the monstrous thing that he was. He was a bastard through and through, so much so that the last thing he ever was called in the series was a bastard. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. And if you want entry into the Paradise Faith cult, I hear that you can get membership cards and copies of Shimonetta, a boring word with the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com.